size of Karakorum in the 16th century, partially using some of its stones. And is surrounded by a wall 4 meters by 400 meters, containing 108 small temples. During previous centuries, the temple was destroyed several times, but always rebuilt. But now, little more than the statue of the god Gombo Gur remains, having survived all onslaught over time. Here, as in the Gandan temple, with its 26 meter high Buddha statue of the goddess Janrai Zig in the modern capital city, visitors can take part in Buddhist prayers. In 1938, the Soviets demolished and melted down the statue. Almost 60 years later, the Buddhist community celebrated the new Yanrai Zig, glittering in gold and built using some five million dollars of donations. At the foot of the Burenhan mountain, in an isolated valley in North Mongolia, lies the Amabayas Galant Monastery. Its curious name is the result of a legend. Whilst searching for a suitable place to build the monastery, holy men came across two boys playing alone in the middle of the steppe and saw it as a sign from God that they should build the monastery there and name it after the two boys. Amma and Bayos Galantu. Amma Bayos Galant was indeed built under a good star. It has never been destroyed and became the most valuable jewel in Mongolia's artistic history. As precious and as enigmatic as the wisdom of Buddha. No omnipotent God, no immortal soul, just a constant wandering. Imprisoned in the circle of life, of death and birth becoming and passing on with the aim of leaving this woeful existence. Lamaistic Buddhism, which is preached in Mongolia, tries to accelerate this path by using magical rituals, meditation and spiritual projection. Through the envisioning and reciting of mantras, and becoming one with the spirit of the teacher. This is how children and would-be monks are taught Mongolian Lamaistic Buddhism in the isolated steppe. A huge teacher-student tradition that at its height had some 110,000 monks, many of them children which was around a third of the male population. A reminder of Tibetan origins, the primal sounds of the longhorns with which prayer times are announced, is an ethnic and almost eerie spectacle for visitors. Especially during the Nadam festival, Ulaanbaatar is a meeting point for the world and it shows proudly its nomadically influenced culture and artistic world. Formed through various influences, an autonomous style of painting, both traditional and modern, called the Mongol Zurak has developed and can be seen at many art exhibition openings and in an enthusiastic art scene. The famous handicraft, Dari Ganga, is used mainly for the embellishment of old costumes and men's nomad accessories, at quite unimaginable costs for the modern clothing industry. But the semi-precious gems that decorate the elaborate traditional costumes each have their own meaning.
they turn pretty young Mongolians into fairy princesses. The newest Mongolian haute couture trends is presented at exclusive fashion shows and photo sessions. During festival nights, Ulaanbaatar is in the mood for a party and is completely booked out. Every open air, every seat in the theatre, the opera house, the ballet and in the concert hall. Throat singers are accompanied by the Mongolian State Horsehead Violin Orchestra. Fascinating, captivating soul food. A Mongolian culinary treat in the modern nomads. The tzatan tent is a famous dish made of wrapped roast mutton ribs. Traditional nomadic food dressed for the modern palate. Show, entertainment, and a trendy nightlife for disco nomads. Saturday night fever in the land of blue skies. Herds of camels wander like modern dinosaurs through the Gobi Desert. They feed on the thorny and salty plants like Saxon. Drink huge amounts of water and then survive on that for a month. They store reserve fat in their humps and they can regulate their body temperature by up to 8 degrees Celsius to avoid overheating and sweating too much. As if on a ship, Riding through calm seas or house-high waves in this ocean of sand. The dream realized by thousands of tourists. A highlight of the Gobi Fuan Sacha National Park, the singing sand dunes, Hongoris Els in southern Mongolia. They get their name from the droning wind that sweeps over the dunes. In the National Park, there are several families of nomads living far apart from one another with their camels. They survive in symbiosis with them, living off their milk, selling their skins and cooking and selling their meat. The Gobi Desert, mountains of sand, endless steppe, pristine rivers and lakes, majestic mountains. Ancient landscape. Pure nature. For tourists, there are lots of activities. On a desert ocean. On two wheels, the whole world just for you. Spend the night with nomads, experience the step on horseback, or race as strong as 50 of them.
up to your knees in crystal clear water fly fishing. Or fight with or against the river. Hit golf balls into the clear blue sky. Or use 12,000 revs to climb the sand dunes. The Mongolian countryside is unique for people who appreciate sublime views and who with luck might also see rare wild animals. Between the cliffs of Bayan Sag, the nest and graveyard of dinosaurs, whose 60 million year old eggs and skeleton were found here. Much younger, but still a million years old, are the hexagonal stone pillars, whose liquid basalt froze into thousands of six sided pillars. The Cretaceous red cliffs of Bayansag used in ancient times to lie at the bottom of the ocean. But nowadays, at sunset, they appear to be in flame and are possibly the most beautiful spectacle in the Gobi Desert. deep, earthy undertones with the light sounds of the heaven above and the constant forward driving rhythms of nature. Mongolia, a land like its music.